before or something and they'll be able to design also mechanically but they don't have the physical feeling if i ask this is the hall what is the span of it i don't uh, how many people will answer that question so this kind of feel they'll get by exposure to industry so this is what is my opinion so such programs are required thank you sir thank you actually i have one uh, mention here regarding industry institution interaction i have been uh, advocating uh, facilitation that an industry should deputy a professor or assistant professor to a company for two years and exchange with an engineer from the company to teach in the in the uh, academy the industry uh, uh, the college will pay the salary to the assistant professor or professor and industry will pay the salary they continue to be in the company but they exchange so that the professors will learn in the industry and industry people also will perfect themselves while teaching this is one suggestion and another request to all the college heads here is that please connect your students to our smart infrast the, there must be whatsapp groups in your colleges if you can connect to our state uh, state coordinators here and national coordinator they will continue to help them in this uh, internships and uh, leadership program this is a request one request for me it's a long pending request yeah um, when one of the building has collapsed from the time onwards my request to all the structural engineer in, uh, in the state see whenever a structural engineer is taking up an assignment with the any, anybody a developer or an institution part of his uh, the agreement with the client uh, that the structural engineer will employ an engineer he will be at the project the salary will be paid by the client so what what, what it means is the, there is a day to day the the communication and interaction with the, the consultant and the project and what exactly is going on if, if this is uh, this practice is done then i think our reputation will go up the the quality of work will go up and it, this will also give an opportunity for the inter, internship because you take 10 people you can along with the engineer they can go to the site every day so they will continue that whatever you brief them every day they go and check it up i think you, we are from the industry side will try to convince our, our friends so that that you have to agree for this proposal so because sometimes what happens is some some of the consultants are extremely good they go there they see the entire the reinforcement design as it is executed as per that their drawings are not but some of the consultants they are sending some junior people maybe the recently qualified people they are not aware some mistakes are happening we should stop that we should stop that i think experience in engineer we should employ and the client should pay for it that should be part of the thing then you get respect more respect from the client when you are not demanding in bombay the most of the consultant they demand from the client if unfortunately from the from long the last 25 30 years i have seen the consultant are most i am sorry because of open open debate the transparent debate was like some as a consultant we are soft submissive to the our client don't do that let us let us have our own say i think that will give more respect and professionalism thank you before before anybody proceeds it is not a slinging match between the industry and the academy no it's not that the point i am trying to make is the crop is now dead in punjab you have a train which is called as a cancer train they have put so much of menus in the land menus in the land that entire population of that land is now affected with the cancer our the society as of now is now infested with cancer unna ga pide man dikka engineers video vastunna endu vallu vastunnaru ante ma college ive college vaadu vidyabhyasam kosam unnaya tharajar kosam unnaya ante that's a point of debate let's not go there but we are always trying to see that the engineer is not employable whose fault is it when the engineer is not employable who will take the responsibility the parents the teachers or the academy pillaru edo me saluguru bayi kosam anukunnade tappa ne vachina na bathu itla undante vaadu rane kodu so here my point is academy academician should take a step back teach them the first fundamentals he comes to the college because the government pays him it's not because he is interested to get educated government free ga pass chestadi government free ga dabbu isthadi vadu ostunadu 
కాకపోతే నా రిక్వెస్ట్ లా ఫర్ అకాడమిషియన్స్ యు షుడ్ బి యు షుడ్ హ్యావ్ ఇట్ యాజ్ అ పార్ట్ ఆఫ్ యువర్ కరికులం టు డూ ఇన్ ఇంటర్న్షిప్ ఫర్ ఇట్ ఈస్ లైక్ ఫార్టీ డేస్ ఏ ఇయర్ యూ గో అండ్ గెట్ ఎడ్యుకేటెడ్ విత్ న్యూ టెక్నాలజీస్ కమింగ్ అప్ యు డెబ్యూట్ యువర్ లెక్చరర్స్ ఆర్ ప్రొఫెసర్స్ సో దాట్ వీ ఆర్ ఎబ్రెస్ విత్ వాట్ ఈస్ హ్యాపనింగ్ ఇన్ ద ఇండస్ట్రీ దట్ కుడ్ బి అట్ పాయింట్ టు గో విత్ అండ్ ఆల్సో వెన్ ద The students are being taught in the colleges. Please teach them what are they going to get. Because I am talking of this because I have done three courses in terms of Yamiya Innovation at Tamro. And how to reach your goal. The children are not taught about the limitations. They are only taught about the highest echelon of the society. If you are a doctor, you are an engineer, you are an inquiry, you are an engineer, you are a doctor, you are a doctor, you are a paramedic, ఒక ఇంజనీర్ గారు కదా పది మంది మేసన్స్ ప్లంబర్స్ ఎలక్ట్రీషియన్స్ అందరూ ఉంటారు ఇది చెప్పకపోవడంతో మనం తప్పు చేస్తున్నాం ఒక ఇంజనీర్ పని చేస్తున్నాడు అంటే వాడి కింద కనీసం ఫార్టీ మెంబర్స్ పని చేస్తే ఒక ఇంజనీర్ అవుతారు అక్కడ వాడు అందరూ ఇంజనీర్ లేకపోతే మరి మిగతా వాడు ఎవరు కావాలి ఇన్ ఫ్యాక్ట్ ఇన్ మై ఇండస్ట్రీ ఐ ప్రిఫర్ టు ఎంప్లాయ్ ఐటీఐ పీపుల్ టు ఇంజనీర్ ఐ పేయింగ్ ఎయిటీన్ థౌసండ్ టు స్టార్ట్ విత్ అదర్ సాలరీ ఫర్ ఇంజనీర్ ఐ హెసిటేట్ టు పే 10000 rupees i am also engineer but this is a state at which our boys the future citizens are coming up and they are madhya majlo singing match kadandi they raba a crop healthy crop ostunda ledu cancer train laitha amalla ivva anukuntunna thank you very much i am uh, Yes, Murthy. I am a professor in engineering. I have. I am also a consultant to several industries. So I am both ways. I had a couple of points to suggest. <coughs> One, among civil engineers, the core competence skill is missing. That is why the employability issue is coming. Number one, the core competence skill is missing because. the faculty in engineering institutions bearing the top 3 or 4 the rest junior faculty are least inspired by and large least motivated and have come into profession by default more than by design so these less motivated faculty industry inept faculty can't churn out good engineers this is number 1 number 2 everybody who is born on the surface of earth can't become an engineer more so a civil engineer the aptitude test is essential for someone see this mcet is hardly a aptitude test in my view whether a guy can become an engineer or not some mechanism should be evolved to see whether he is fitting into that profession without that we are churning out we are getting out wrong products with wrong inclinations the third point that i thought i should bring it to this august gathering is but i make my point is more no student motivation in fact iit kanpur had started one project of fall in love with civil engineering some time back 
wherein Mahesh Tandon and a couple of professors from Roki used to take students on a 30-day sojourn to all the major projects in the country, wherein they could get exposed to what is the best in civil engineering, so that they can set their benchmark, they can set their, you know, uh, goal. This is what an engineer can do, rather than construct houses, basically. So, I think if you motivate students, if you get the right aptitude students, more important, faculty at all levels should be first interested to teach and do relevant teaching. When I say relevant teaching, someone I think uh, Professor CBAT was sharing. I am a witness to several expert lectures that happen, several conferences that happen. Suppose if you look at the relevance of that either to the society or to the student in the immediate future, it would be a tall order. Coming to the internship, I also have a consultancy firm where I take interns from several colleges at least four or five per year. The issue would be, if they are way off the mark, it will be a drag on my time and my resource to train them. That's number one. So, I would always think the best could come as an intern so that I can make it still better. I can't pick up one dad and try to train him as a good civil engineer in six weeks or eight weeks of time. <coughs> Basically, the issue that is irking the civil engineering fraternity today, I believe, the core competence is not there because wrong set of students with wrong skills, wrong aptitudes or inappropriate aptitudes are getting into profession. Inept teachers are handling them. The focus is mostly on getting a degree and not on knowledge acquisition per se. One of my friends there said, you know, people are not encouraging their students for internship. Wherever they go, they say the sir is busy. It's simply because any company, any industry can go a little bit towards this social objective. They can't compromise their corporate objective they can't compromise on their basic time to train someone else and that dog who is just ill equipped. Mm -hmm. These are my some thoughts that I can share with you. Yes, sir. Thank you. First of all, let me compliment Engineer Suvir Pekar by arranging this industry institute interaction. Just before that, let me tell you. I have completed 50 years of experience in teaching. And I am also proud to say Surya Prakash was my student 30 years back. <laughs> <laughs> and P.V. Rao and some other people are here in the gathering. And while at JMTU, I was a consultant also for a number of organizations. There I had the opportunity, whatever consultancy work I used to get, I used to give to students for project work. Thereby, then I had the satisfaction that not only I was a simple professor or teacher, something like that, but I was an engineer also. Many people from different organizations coming and sitting and waiting for me to get the designs and all those things. So that experience now I am able to share with my students. Whenever I go to the class, I go to all classes. Survey or strength of materials or concrete. Then I tell them, the experiment which we are learning now, the points which I am telling you now, even after your retirement, you have to keep these notes with you. The significance of that, you are doing some experiment and giving the results. You have to give inference over that. What is the inference? You have to tell the suitability of the material, whether it is a unit and engineering material or not. When you go out, when you say uh, some problem is posed to you, what are the tests you have to carry out? What are the inference you have to give? Just like medical people, diagnostic center, they give values. By the side of that, they give the permissible values and all those things. So based on that, whether it material, they say what disease is, they, they diagnose like that. Here also, 
whatever result you put, whatever result you get, you put it, and then you say whether it is suitable or not. Without giving recommendations, your test report is not valid. So once you go out to the college, again you have to come back to the college, and then you see how you are the curriculum is based, uh, based in such a way. Now in the recent modification syllabus, I am also happy to say. That I am a member of the Board of Studies representing all the private engineering colleges. In the recent uh, university has nominated me. Beside me, there is another person, another person also. Uh, recently, UGC has introduced a choice-based credit system. In that choice, in the motto of this, just like unit examination, the syllabus should be uniform throughout the country. The syllabus should be uniform throughout the country so that one student from this institution can get a transfer to another state university in other states so that the syllabus will be uniform. So in, uh, with that basis only, Judy has introduced this choice based credit system. Another thing is, is the student choosing the branch by choice or by chance? But here, what is happening is, because of the, the speed reimbursement and all those things, students who are really interested are not joining this. It's not by their choice. It is by chance they are taking this. That's why they are not showing interest. That is the reason also mainly for this unemployment issue. So the motto of our management is our students should be, say, they should be employers, not say they should be job givers. They should not be job seekers. With that motto and with my experience, I have been trying to inculcate or translating my, all my experiences to the students living. For information, another thing I am telling you is, in the university, in the recent changes in the syllabus, they have introduced entrepreneurship as one of the subjects. They have introduced entrepreneurship as one of the subjects. And another thing is, they have also introduced professional ethics. Professional ethics and entrepreneurship, they are one of the subjects they have introduced. But one unfortunate thing is, they have kept six open electives. That means, any engineering student,